The biggest news of the day is this D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling, which is not good for Trump. It was a unanimous de decision by all three judges. Uh, two had been appointed by uh, Biden. One had been appointed by H.W. Bush. And they found unanimously that a sitting president does not have immunity uh, to charges, criminal charges, based on what he does while he's in office once he's left the office. Um, so somebody like Trump, who's post his term, can indeed be charged if he broke the law while the sitting president. And uh, now he's probably going to ask the full circuit, full D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals to reconsider that three judge panel's ruling, that's par for the course when you lose. In nine cases out of 10, they will reject you. And I have a feeling they're gonna reject this here. I Like, the judges don't want any part of this. No. The fewer that have to weigh in on it, the, the better, I'm sure. And then he's going to appeal to the US Supreme Court and they may not take it either. We've had ongoing debates on the show about just how likely they will be to take it. We don't know. So overall, net-net, the odds are very bad for Trump winning this case, Matt, but delay, delay works in his favor because this thing was supposed to get started at the trial court on March 6th. That's officially off. Yeah. I mean, in every one of these cases, it always comes down to, or usually comes down to, there's a bad moment of lawyering for Trump. And then there's a pretty bad moment of clienting. And both of those things happen under uh, cross-examination when they were sort of given hypothetical scenarios about the horrible things a president might do. They basically said, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's what we should do. And then Trump goes out in truth social and starts uh, talking about absolute immunity in all caps. Um, so this is not a surprise at all. Um, I, I'm very curious to see whether the Supreme Court takes it because they're going to have some Trump on their hands in the year 2024. And I imagine that they want to have the least amount of Trump possible, or at least keep their powder dry politically. And we all know that John Roberts is a very politically attuned chief justice. Um, uh, it's going to be hard to imagine any uh, judge looking at this one particular case about immunity and saying, you know, I think the Trump and his uh, legal team has a point here. Uh, but then, as you say, and rightly points out, I don't know how many of these trials are going to get going uh, before the election. And if it's just the one in New York, uh, that's not going to make Trump's candidacy any worse. It'll probably make it better. Mm -hmm. But this could go pretty quickly at this point, Liz. I mean, they Trump's going to appeal the the full D.C. Circuit en banc for an en banc hearing, as they call it, with all the ju judges. He's probably going to get a quick denial. He'll file at the U.S. Supreme Court. He's probably going to get a quick denial there. I don't, I don't know that they're going to take it. I don't think it's actually that it's a novel legal issue. It hasn't been decided before, but it's actually a pretty simple one. His argument was very much kind of a stretch if you look at how he argued it. I think they're probably gonna dispatch of this pretty quickly and this thing could get rescheduled faster than I had anticipated, I think, just based on the way this came down um, in the DC trial court, the federal DC trial court. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. The other thing that I think will be interesting is if the Supreme Court does decide to take this case, um, you know, say they do, and say they decide to rule against Trump, okay, we might be in a situation where somehow, you know, the Supreme Court has basically, uh, you know, made an enemy of Trump, which, you know, is totally fine by me. But the thing I'm always curious about is, okay, well, all of the liberals who have been bellyaching this entire time about how, oh, well, you know, the Supreme Court is totally, you know, in bed with Trump, completely doing his bidding, they're so Republican, Will any of them actually alter their political beliefs, their their belief mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court's integrity is so compromised? Will any of them actually, you know, sort of look at this and see it for what it is, which is, you know, the Supreme Court's attempt to legitimately, um, you know, be safeguards of our justice system? I don't think they will. And so I really see our politics getting even more toxic as a result of this, because that would be the honorable thing to do, right? That would be the sort of fair and balanced thing to do. And I don't really think that that's what they're going to do. And keep in mind also mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court is likely to be taking up at some point one of these, I think, kind of legally obscure challenges to Trump's ballot access yes. on primary elections uh, on uh, based on a unique reading of the 14th Amendment. And uh, I would presume that what, if that gets to the Supreme Court level, that they're going to rule in Trump's favor. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of people being inconsistent, let's say, about their treatment politically of the Supreme Court. And it's worth it's pointing true, out, I mean, the 14th yeah. Amendment argument is like a, you know, in my opinion, a very legally weak one. I think it is important for Trump to have ballot access here, despite not being any sort of fan of his. But it is really astonishing how even if the Supreme Court does decide to rule in that manner, 
I don't know what type of difference this will actually make in our politics overall. Mm -hmm. No one's going to, everyone will just use it to confirm their priors. But yeah, he'll win the, should he be banned from state ballots because he caused an insurrection and therefore is barred under the 14th Amendment. He's going to win that with the SCOTUS. And I don't think they're going to take this case, but if they do, I think he's going to lose. Delay does work in his favor. He wants this case to be pushed to after the November election, thinking that he will win. And then being in the driver's seat, he will pull the bridle back and the horses will stop because he'll then be in charge of the Department of Justice. And he's going to promptly fire Jack Smith and make sure this case goes away. That's the game plan. If the case gets started and God forbid for Trump gets resolved before November, he's in a whole ton of trouble because no one involved will be rooting for him. The judge, the jury, you know, maybe I guess his own lawyers. But in any event, the, the immunity argument was a bit of a stretch, you know, as was made clear at the argument when they asked his lawyer, so are you saying the sitting president could go use SEAL Team 6 to assassinate an opponent? And it would, actually, we have that pulled. I'll play it for you. This is this was Trump's lawyer's argument in front of the appellate court in SOT 1. I asked you a yes, no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. And so, so your answer is, is, no. is My answer is qualified, yes. There is a political process that would have to occur under our, the structure of our Constitution, which would require impeachment and conviction by the Senate. Okay. <laughs> that was never going any. That was never going anywhere, Matt. It's not just that it's never going anywhere, but I really, I, I can't beseech enough. Libertarians are annoying people, and especially Libs. But um, <laughs> one thing that libertarians can always see in any situation is what happens when the evil power that you're looking for, or at least the power to cover your ass that you're looking for, <laughs> is used by the people that you hate. Because that's what's, mm. they're going to be the next ones in power. We always see this because we kind of hate everybody in power, and they're never our team. Yeah. Um, it's amazing that someone who... And I know, I know honest meaning conservatives who really think that Joe Biden is potentially dictatorial or Kamala Harris or whoever is, is running the country at the current moment. Um, and if you really truly believe that, and this is true of Democrats too, if you really think that Trump is a dictator in waiting, why haven't you been spending all of your time defrocking the executive branch of power? Um, yeah. Because they're going and uh, in this case, it was uh, is one of the worst examples of that. The um, just a couple of procedural uh, points. The appeals court that just ruled against him has given Trump until February 12th, today's the 6th, to file an emergency stay request with the Supreme Court, asking the Supreme Court to just keep the entire proceeding in abeyance until he can get an appeal filed with SCOTUS and delay the case that way. We'll see what he does. I do think he'll go first to the DC circuit. He'll probably get the boot on the forehead and then file with the Supreme Court. The oral arguments on that separate case about whether Colorado was right to keep him off of the ballot go up to the Supreme Court this Thursday. So SCOTUS is taking up that ballot access thing. He's going to win that. And then there's another case before SCOTUS right now involving other January 6th defendants and whether this claim of obstruction of a congressional proceeding can be brought against them for the riot that took place, whether this claim is an apt claim for that kind of behavior. And that case SCOTUS is taking, and while Trump's not a party to that case, it's also a claim that's been brought against him in this very trial. And we'll see whether, you know, th that would obviously help him a lot if the Supreme Court ruled, you can't bring this claim against this type of behavior. So he could be the big beneficiary of that. I mean, in a normal case, I think, the lower court would say, let's see what happens at SCOTUS with one of the, this, one of the main claims against you before we proceed. There, ha there has been no ruling by Judge Chutkin to that effect. So Trump's winning some and losing some. Let's discuss a crucial aspect of your financial health, your credit report. It's time to face a hard truth. Your credit report could be suffering due to unfounded reputation damaging claims. These are the kind of claims that simply will not hold up under rigorous scrutiny so they must be tested. And that is where Lexington Law Firm comes into play. For less than $100, Lexington Law champions your cause using a comprehensive arsenal of consumer protection laws to fight for your best credit report. 
Lexington Law is fully equipped to challenge those exploitative creditors and aggressive debt collectors who obstruct your financial path. Go and visit LexingtonLaw.com for a complimentary credit assessment. Then let their experts place your credit under the microscope, ensuring that it reflects your true financial story. Remember to mention that Megan referred you at LexingtonLaw.com. Empower yourself with the right team on your side. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.